So are, are you suggesting that the church isn't Israel? Church of God and Israel are two separate entities. Here, here's the problem. You're, you're talking now about supersessionism. The Bible doesn't allow that. Romans 11 does not allow that. That's the very verse you're talking about. R.C. affirmed that based on Romans chapter 11, the future salvation of the nation Israel. Romans 11:26 says all of Israel will be saved. Every Jewish person is good. What does that verse mean? Well, all Israel will be saved. That's in the future. There will be the salvation of the nation Israel. Paul basically in Romans 11 is saying that the gifts and callings of God are not um, repented of. God doesn't change his mind. And in the Old Testament, he promised salvation to Israel in the new covenant, Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 36. So God made a promise in the future to, to fulfill the Davidic covenant, fulfill the Abrahamic promise with the nation Israel. Even after they killed the Messiah, you remember in, in the early part of the book of Acts, Peter gets up and, and identifies what they had just done, but says, you are still the people of God. Uh, God has a plan for the future salvation of Israel because his gifts and callings are not subject to repentance. That doesn't mean that all Jews through all of human history will be saved. It means that there will be a time in the future when the nation Israel believes and is saved. And that is described in detail in the book of Zechariah. When they look on the one they pierced, mourn for him as an only son, and a fountain of forgiveness and blessing is open to Israel. And then it follows in, into the kingdom. It's my conviction, I don't know if you've read the book I wrote called The Gospel According to God, but Isaiah 53 will be the confession of the nation Israel when they are saved. Because it's, it's not really a prophecy. Isaiah 53 is not really a prophecy of the life of Christ because all the verbs are in the past tense. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Because what he's prophesying is the future salvation of Israel when they look back and say he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his chastening, we have, we have shalom with God. So that whole 53rd chapter is a confession of Israel which they will come to by the Spirit of God when they look on the one they pierced, mourn for him as an only son, and understand what his life and death meant for them. Uh, the prophets also say that the two-thirds of the Jews will be, will be purged out, but there will be a future salvation of living Jews who make up the, the, the nation Israel. Um, so are, are you suggesting that the church isn't Israel? No, the church is not Israel because they're separated. <laughs> church of God and Israel are two separate entities. Uh, here, here's the problem. You're, you're talking now about supersessionism. You're talking about the idea that um, all the promises to Israel, Israel has forf uh, forfeited by its disobedience and are now belonging to the church. The Bible doesn't allow that. Romans 11 does not allow that. That's the very verse you're talking about. The, the promises God made to Israel, he will fulfill to Israel. So uh, to, to make the church the recipient of promises given to Israel splits the Old Testament verses. You can go all the way back to Deuteronomy, back to the mountain, Ebal and Mount Gerizim, uh, where God says, obey me and you'll have curse, uh, blessings, disobey me and you'll have curses. So I remember being in Jerusalem and hearing a Reformed preacher there say, um, all of the curses came on national Israel, all of the blessings come on the church. Well, I mean, it's one thing to say that, it's something else to come to Jerusalem and say it. Uh, and he was, by the way, followed up by Dr. Charles Feinberg, who was my mentor who was so outraged, he got up after that and said, well, it's wonderful that we all gather together to tell the Jews that they're getting nothing but the curses. So the future kingdom of Israel will bring about the salvation of the nation Israel. And that's what Jeremiah is talking about when he says, I'm going to give you a new heart and a new spirit and write my law in your hearts. And that's talking to Israel. Yes, I believe in that. And you know, I love the fact that R.C. affirmed that based on Romans chapter 11, the future salvation of the nation Israel. It's inescapable because it's in the text. Um, you know, we get in trouble when we superimpose systems over the text, but if we let the text speak, we, we, it's amazing how we all end up at the same place.